So there's been some interesting research with creatine and depression. Yes, there has. It's an emerging area, primarily to Utah. There's a great psychiatry group there. And uh, as a caveat, no study has ever looked at creatine without antidepressant medication. So they're always as adjuncts. So we're not saying creatine could ever replace anxiety or antidepressive medications. But in these sub uh, populations, primarily uh, females with clinical depression, it's really starting to have some um, speed up recovery and decrease some of the symptoms. The mechanisms are starting to emerge it's starting to have a role primarily from rodents, and, and this is implicated in depression where uh, they have reduced brain creatine stores, so maybe creatine supplementation can bring those levels up. Uh, there's potential to increase BDNF, so that has been implicated there as well. And there's another thing called neurofilament um, or light chain. It's an indication of neuronal damage, uh, and one gram of creatine in your diet has been shown to reduce that. So there's potential there, but the overarching thing with uh, antidepression is it increases brain bioenergetics, as you, as you mentioned, and decreases, again, here we go, mitochondrial health, uh, decreases reactive oxidative species. All these are implicated in all the brain and, and cognitive decline and primarily depression. So I'm really excited in that area. A big RCT needs to be done, though, um, because it's always being added to either cognitive uh, behavior therapy or SSRIs, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there's also a big um, inflammatory component in depression. Is. There's like yeah. inflammation. In fact, there have been studies just in healthy mm -hmm. young individuals where they induce inflammation yes. through like LPS. It can cause depressive symptoms. Yeah, yeah. And 100%. Yeah. So the anti-inflammatory role comes back there as well. So you'll start to hear these two words, anti-catabolic and anti-inflammatory. Uh, people think of Advil or Tylenol from an anti-inflammatory, but creatine seems to work some very similar in the COX inhibitors as well, And um, but it seems to decrease cytokines. Um, so it could be something there to consider. Yeah. Well, what's interesting interesting is, you know, activated lymphocytes, mm -hmm. T-cells, yep. consume just enormous mm -hmm. amounts of energy, right. you know, and, and to, to basically become active mm -hmm. and fight off pathogens. Right. And so I'm wondering if creatine is taken up by, you know, these immune cells and it maybe helps in some way. I mean, you're saying it reduces cytokines. I mean, a lot of these T-cells are, you know, producing cytokines mm -hmm. to fight off things, but... Um, who knows if they have if they have that energetic boost? Yes. Um, how that could affect you know just I would say like the broader mm -hmm. like not having this huge kind of war going on yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some cellular data around the immune system cells, around creatine, specifically around T cells or macrophages. Uh, that's where the anti-cancer idea came in from creatine, specifically like uh, regarding lymphoma, leuke leukemia. Um, so uh, that's more in vitro 